Remember not the former things, nor consider things of old. Behold, I am a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Prayers today continue to be for healing and protection from germs for all of our families and friends. Brenda Bennett has been in the hospital for one week. Gideon Outson has COVID. Uh, Emma Fraser is at St. John's with COVID pneumonia. Strength for her mother, Rochelle. Uh, Roger Guyverson is still recovering from COVID. Nancy is at Express Care this morning. I think being treated for pneumonia. I'm asking for thank you prayers for grandson Baylor, who's graduating a semester early and going off to Durango, Colorado for college on January 14th, and safe travel for Ashley and I as we go to Colorado for his party. Any questions? Heavenly Father, we just lift up these prayers to you. Prayers for healing, prayers of thanksgiving, and just offering ourselves to you, Lord. We look to you for guidance in our lives, Lord. We just ask that you be with those who are suffering right now from various illnesses, pneumonia, COVID, even the simple flu. We never thought we'd say the simple flu. But we know that you are our great healer and you provide us with that healing. Sometimes your direct touch, sometimes by touching the lives of the doctors and nurses you have gifted to treat us, Lord. We just ask that you continue to do such things, Lord. And we lift up Baylor to you in praise and thanksgiving, Lord. From where he's been to where he is now is only through your, your presence your action in his life, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We pray for the safety of those who are traveling this week, uh, as well as our family and friends who will be traveling next week, Lord. And, and as we approach this new year, Lord, we just pray that this year will be a year where your presence will be known even more greatly than it has ever been known in the past. That you will that the church and your body of believers will shout from the rooftops your grace, your love, and your forgiveness, Lord. We are a hurting world and we need you more than ever. We just ask for your presence in everyone's life, that they may be guided and find you. And we pray together as our Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Well, starting a new series this week. Uh, it's going to be a short one, but it will transition us into the new year. New beginnings. Today's message is called Redo's. Uh, I know most of you aren't uh, sports fans like I am. So this illustration will be a little odd, or may seem a little odd, but a couple of years ago, Kentucky and Missouri played in a football game. And it came down to the last play of the game. Kentucky was down by seven, or excuse me, by uh, five. And they were driving down the field uh, to obviously win the game. And as time ran out, they threw a pass into the end zone that wasn't completed. And of course, when something like that happens in a big game, the players start to get dejected and, and wonder what happened and why couldn't we do this. 
And then all of a sudden, from the back of the end zone, you know, at the end of the play, as the play was ending, the referee tossed that all familiar yellow flag. And everybody held their breath. And the call ended up being defensive pass interference against Missouri. Okay, no big deal. Time's up. Clock is at zero. The game's over. Not so fast. Kentucky got one more chance at redemption in this game. And they actually got a double bonus out of this. Not only did they get a, one more play after time had expired, but because the penalty occurred in the end zone, the ball was placed at the one-yard line. By rule. Needless to say, Kentucky scored on the next play. They got their redo to win the game. And I, I tell this story because we go through life and we have regrets. We have thoughts of, I wish I'd done something different, or I wish I had a chance to, to do something over again, or to change my life. And this message is about those opportunities, those redo moments when we think that the clock has expired. We read from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his second letter, chapter 5, verses 11 through 21. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade others. But what we what we are is known to God, and I hope it is known also to your conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you cause to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast about outward appearance and not about what is in the heart. For if we are Beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all. Therefore, all have died. And he died for all, that those who might have, might no longer live for themselves, but for him, who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this from God, who through Christ reconciled himself to us and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ. God making his appeal through us, we implore you, or we implore you on behalf of Christ, we re be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him sin to be sin, excuse me, for our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So Paul's saying that through Jesus we've gotten a second opportunity. We get our redo. And it seems that as we approach this time of year, this space between Christmas and New Year's, the calendar, we look at the calendar and we see that it's going to be changes. And it signals something in us that we're going to change with the calendar. I can do something different. I can be different. And I don't know if there's any real psychology behind it. But I do know that this week 
between Christmas and New Year's is filled with discussions about how I'm going to be different next year. How I'm going to make these changes in my life. You know, and maybe it's just the simple idea of turning the page from, Jan from December to January, opening that new book. But we use it as a time to, to reevaluate and contemplate what's going on in our lives over the past 365 days. For some of us, we, we go back even further and we look at maybe the last five years or the last decade or so, and we're, we're going, things are just not where I thought they would be, and I need to change. And whatever the reasons we do this, we think about who we are or where we are and where we ought to be. Once we think we have the answers for those questions, we move on to the hard part. How do I change? How to make that change in my life? But we run into a problem in that when we turn that page from December 31st to January 1st, does anything really change? When I change my calendar in my office, I am still going to be Todd Frick. I'm still going to live at the same address. I am, and take this for what it's worth, honey, I am still going to have my same wife. And I'm still going to have my same jobs. What is really new when I change that page? Not much at that point. We make these resolutions going into the new year. And so I ask you, have you made any resolutions yet? Have you asked yourself how I'm going to do that? Or come to a determination as to how you're going to do that? I have to be honest with you, I hadn't given it much thought. That was until uh, well, Saturday when I wrote this sermon. And then I began to think about it, and I realized that there are some things that I need to do. I need to change, I need to return to doing things that I've gotten away from. Not so much that I need to change myself, but I need to change what I do. And we make these resolutions every year. And they often are, sound like, you know, I need to lose some weight. I need to eat better, get healthy. You know, we've just spent the last six weeks gorging ourselves on spritz cookies and chocolate and mints and candy canes and ham and turkey and who knows what other kinds of food we've had. Or we say to ourselves, I need, to, I need to, to stop procrastinating. I need to get things done today that need to be done today. But we start thinking about those and we say, well, the first of the year is coming up. I'll start then. You want to change your procrastination and you're going to wait a week? Or I want to become more efficient at work so that I can have more time at home with my family. Or maybe be able to get more work done and, and get that promotion that's coming up. Do you see anything about these changes, these resolutions? As I thought about them, I realized that these resolutions are trying to change the wrong thing. When we make resolutions, we're trying to change our circumstances or uh, the things around us rather than ourselves. We are trying to change the outside before we change the inside. And that made me think, or actually made me remember what Jesus said to the scribes and Pharisees during one of his moments of teaching. First clean the inside of the cup and the plate. 
that the outside may also be clean. And it made me realize we need to spend more time on the inside and not the outside. But should we change? Should we change who we are? I mean, we've been like this for, well, myself for 53 years. There's a large number of people out there who know a whole lot more than I do that say, no, you really shouldn't change who you are. You really can't. Well, the problem with that is there are so many people out there that that's what they're longing to do. They're longing to be different, to, to change something within themselves, to, to solve this, this problem of emptiness that they have, or that uneasy feeling that something is just not quite right. And the new year often brings that hope that a little change will do us good. Excuse me. That if I could change just one thing, I'll, I'll be happier, more fulfilled with my life, maybe even experience a little more peace and joy. So we make these resolutions and we jump in on January 1st with both feet and we hit the ground running and then we just kind of slow down. It's like we start running through mud. And we return to this state of, well, this is who I am. The state of being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Something that Paul also addresses when he wrote to the church in Rome. And he says, but I am of the flesh. I am a human being. God made me in this flesh. And it has its faults. I was sold under sin. And I do not understand my own actions. For I do not do what I want but I do the very thing I hate. I want to change, but I can't. I keep returning back to what I was. When we don't see or feel or, or grasp the change that's occurring, we allow those resolutions to fade away and by the end of, you know, the first two months, they're gone. You know, it's statistically shown that the beginning of the year, gym memberships nearly double on January 2nd. Well, it'll be January 3rd this year, the second's on a Sunday. And the attendance, you know, I mean, you can't get into the gym and not have to wait for a piece of equipment. You know, the last couple of years have seen, rather than gym memberships, we've seen spikes in purchases of, of home gym packages and treadmills and bikes and things like that. And I can't tell you the number of people who I've, as an as a owner of one of those and a, and a member of one of the groups, I see people on on Facebook who are posting and you know they're all going at it they're on it every day for a while and then August they take a picture of their bike and they say I really need to get back on this by the end of February by March 1st gym member gym attendance is back down to where it was we get comfortable being who, where we were. There weren't anything, wasn't any effort to it. Nothing new for the world. It's been going on for a long time. Don't believe me? Look at Genesis. This passage is before the end of creation ever, ever happened. 
Genesis chapter 2, verses 5 and 7. No bush of the field was yet in the land, and no small plant of the field had yet sprung up. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain on the land, and there was no man to work the ground. Then the Lord God formed the man of the dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living creature. God brought change to his creation by you and I. Mankind was created to work the ground. To bring the kind of change that was needed to sustain life as we know it. Without Adam and Eve, life could not have happened. They came, God created them, and they worked the ground to produce the fr fruits and vegetables and, and meat to eat that turned around and fer re fertilized the land so that you could have more food. And some of you may be thinking wait a minute, wasn't it called paradise? Didn't God, doesn't it say that God supplied them with all they needed? Well, you're not wrong. He supplied them with all they needed. But they needed to work the land in order to bring it to where they were at. You see, God supplies, even today, supplies us with all that we need. But just as he supplied Adam and Eve and they had to work the ground to get the food and to get what they needed, there's things that we have to do as well. There's <laughs> work to be done, effort to be made. We all have an opportunity to get that redo. And it doesn't have to happen on January 1. It can happen at any time. But if you are going to change yourself, you have to work at tilling the soil of your heart. You have to turn it over. If you've ever turned a feral field, feral field into a working farmland, it takes a lot of work. You have to start on the inside inside the ground, bring all of that up. You have to change yourself from the inside. You can't just change the outside and change what people see or hear from you and expect change, effective change, to really happen. And I'll be honest with you, the best and only way to do that is to have Jesus in your life. To bring Jesus into your heart. Jesus and the Holy Spirit are that, that plowshare, or to use a modern term, that dister that comes through and cuts up the ground and makes hard, flat surfaces into moist, smaller pieces that plants can grow in and grow through. You bring him into your heart. And he starts tilling it up, breaking off, breaking the old apart, breaking that hardness in your heart into the soft soil that it can be used to plant new seeds. But it takes time. Ask any farmer, they don't just go through that field one time. Even Fields that have been previously plowed. They go over it two or three times in three or four different directions. Two or three times in three or four different directions. But they go in different directions. They cut it up. They make it small. They make it so that the seeds will go under the ground and that they can grow and put their roots into places and take hold. Sometimes, you 
know, as I mean, if a farmer is plowing a new field, he's going to run into large boulders or even trees that have to be cut out. Roots that are underground that you don't see that get caught in in the, the machinery and break things. Stop you for a while. Knock you back in your tracks for a little bit. But they don't stop. And neither should we. Even when it seems that we can't go on, when things are so bad or so hard to get through, when it feels like your heart cannot be made fertile, remember, you're not alone in this. First thing is, you have Jesus to carry you through. He's there with you through all of it. Second, you have the Holy Spirit to empower you, to remind you that it's okay, that you're going to stumble and fall, but keep going. And third, you have the entire body of believers there to encourage you, there to help you cut through that hard soil in your heart. And you're there for them as well. God is here for us all the time. He made us. He will not leave us behind. He will not leave us to, to rust or to, to rot. But he will keep working us, renewing us. We were created, as Paul said in his letter to Ephesus, Created in Christ for good works. God prepared each of us a long time ago. Long before any of us were born to do what we do. He knows what we're capable of. He created us to be the work of the kingdom. To work for the kingdom. And when you walk with Jesus in your heart, when you bring him in to change your heart, to replant the seeds that you need to be a child of God, you will grow something new. With Jesus there, our hearts change, our hearts grow seeds that Show the rest of the world that new things are possible. That we can change from the inside out. But that's where it starts. When we want that change, when we resolve to change, to begin over, to take that redo and score that touchdown, to plant that new field, We do it from the inside out with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we just we thank you for, for sending Jesus, for, for having him born as a child and, and experienced life as we did so that he knows what we go through. But he rose above it and he sent us the Holy Spirit to get us through it as well, Lord. Help us to continue to turn over our hearts, to plant those new seeds with your word and your presence in our lives, Lord, so that we can provide new growth for this world that is hardened and doesn't allow for that seed to take hold. Our inner change produces outward change that can be seen by others and hope that they will see that and see where it comes from. That it's inner, inner inside, through you and through your power. We just thank you and praise you for all that you've done for us with that, Lord, and bringing us closer to you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ.
And it's in his name we pray. Amen. I hope you all have a great week this week. Enjoy your new year. I hope you all celebrated a wonderful Christmas. Let's go out and change the world.